All right, uh, let's get started. Um, continuing this uh, pre-video series, uh, we'll be talking about um, how uh, QTP goes and then uh, um, records those uh, those objects. Right. Um, so in this uh, presentation, I'll be looking at how QTP recognizes those objects while we are recording it, and uh, we're going to be discussing uh, uh, different options here as uh, um, how it basically records it, how it uh, keeps account of uh, what is happening behind the scenes. Uh, so let me show you all that. So for us to get started, let me uh, start uh, my QTP. And uh, from the previous class we were working on, we were working on uh, the eBay.com. And uh, if you um, could recall that we went in there and then we did a basic search on uh, uh, Nike shoes or uh, Disney, um, Orlando Disney tickets. So I'm going to open that test case um, and uh, let me show you what uh, we have done there. And in that um, search for, all right, let's uh, look into this. Um, and in our search for the Yankee tickets, which we were searching for, right? Um, notice that uh, it it had recorded this line. This line where it says browser, eBay electronics, and uh, page, and uh, yada yada yada. Okay. Now, um, where where did it where did it put this thing, right? The information about the browser and page and web edit and all that. Where where exactly it is storing this information? Because we we did talk about in the previous class that uh, these are the objects, right? Um, so where is it storing the information about the objects? The objects being browser, page, and web edit. Um, so, uh, and then there's another one called web button. So where is it storing that information? It is uh, actually storing that information in what is called an object repository. So uh, where would I go and find out the information about object repository? In order for you to open object repository, the many ways for you to do that, you could go into uh, resources and click on object repository, or you could uh, do a control R, or better yet, you could just go in and then uh, click on this one, Object Repository, right? Okay, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to show you how Object Repository is going to look like. Okay, this is this is your Object Repository, all right? Okay, now, let's uh, take a look at what we have in here. Uh, what basically you have in here is uh, test objects. The uh, question is, uh, what are test objects, right? Um, and how did it put, what would it put inside in here? Now, I want you to know that um, while recording, any object that you come in contact, right, um, any object you come in contact, like the web edit box or the web button, right, those are the objects which get stored in the object repository as test objects, right? So uh, we come in contact with the browser, so it stored the information about the browser. So here is the information about the browser. We, come in, we came in contact with uh, a page, so it stored the information about the page. And inside that page, we, we came in contact with uh, certain things. So I'm going to expand that and then notice that this and that, uh, these are like two objects we, uh, we came in contact with. Now, how would you find out the details about any particular object? Now, I know from practice, uh, from doing this for so many years, that when I see this little icon here, I know that that's, uh, that's a browser. Right, and when you see this yellow little thing, that's a page. But how would you confirm that that's a browser and that's a page? Now, um, notice that when I when I go ahead and then do this, um, let me just grab a, a highlighter uh, here and then show you uh, this one. This one um, will, if you pay attention to this area, which is the class. Uh, this class here basically would would tell you. This this part this part would tell you this part would tell you uh, what this particular object is right so um, let's say if I'm talking about if I'm talking about uh, this object um, if I'm talking about that what got changed here it 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 is a browser so if I click on that this is a page if I click on that that's another page and if I click on that it's a web button and when I click on that that's a web edit. That's how you identify objects inside of inside an object library, um, object repository rather, right? In, and and inside object repository, what you have is a bunch of objects, and those test objects they get in here 
um, because you came in contact with them. All right? Okay, now QTP will start assigning what is called a logical name to these objects. Okay, now let's talk about the name part, right? So if you if you see this area, if you see this area, uh, here it is trying to give it a name. And the name it gives is uh, is any logical name it is trying to come up with, right? So the the logical name it comes uh, it, it it decides uh, for let's say for the browser is eBay Electronics dot um, in comma cars. Now, how does it come to um, that logical name? The logical name is uh, determined by by either the text right of that browser the text um, or the title of the browser so it goes and then it, it sees that okay this is since it's an eBay browser um, and uh, they are doing something with the electronics and cars so that so while the developer uh, gives a title to the browser it goes and picks up that for this as well as for the page um, otherwise it, it, it sees uh, um, either for a, a, a label or for a text or for a value or or something which is either on the left or on the top of, of any object. Let's say uh, in this case, this search is a button, right? So it, it looks for it looks for the label for that button, right? And then it gives that it, it gives that name in here, right? Uh, likewise for this uh, for this box, it, it looks uh, inside as the as the value for it, and then it gives gives you gives you that. Now what I mean by that is. Uh, um, I'm going to be showing you um, uh, HTML code, and HTML code um, is where you have to identify the developer names an object as something. So QTP goes and then picks up either the name of that object, uh, what the developer had given, or it looks for the label, or it looks for some text, and that's how it comes up with the logical naming of uh, of an object which it, it stores in here. Right now. Um, for the classes, uh, uh, or for each of these objects, we have to know what is called the the properties of those objects. Right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the the properties. Now these are these are the properties which we are talking about in here. All right. So let's uh, look into it. Now when you when you have selected an object, when you select an object. Right? It shows in here some of the values of, of, of the, or rather the properties of that object. All right. Now, uh, for each test object, QTP has a list of mandatory properties it must learn. Right? The mandatory properties. Uh, those are kind of like the default properties. Right? Um, now, the question is, are the default properties enough to uniquely identify the object on the window or the page? Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, these are these are it. It decided that type, name, and HTML tag are some of the properties it is going to use in order to identify this object on the page. Right? Sometimes these properties are just not enough. In that case, it has to look for uh, the additional properties in the form of an ordinal identifier. So. Uh, we're going to be talking about what is an ordinal um, identifier. Uh, that basically, it's nothing but it assigns a, a numerical value to the test object um, that indicates the order, or rather, the position uh, relative to the other objects. Right. So, meaning that uh, if there are two objects, uh, like a web edit, so one would be web edit zero, and the the other one would be web edit one. Right. Um, if if they happen to have the same name, which is which is very unique. That's that's not necessarily uh, what uh, happens but uh, so in 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 our future classes when I'm going to be talking about um, uh, identifying a particular object if it if if the default properties are not sufficient enough for it to identify we're going to be looking into what is called the ordinal identifier and, and then I'm gonna give you a demo of how that thing works all right okay so um, in here we just talked about uh, how when QTP records it uh, stores the object into the object repository and we did talk about the test objects uh, any object which you come in contact it becomes basically get stored into it now uh, you might be wondering like on a page you have like hundreds of objects in there but how come that it, it recorded only these three or four and not the rest that is because if you have to if you come in contact with it then it, it gets, gets uh, stored 
Now, we talk about QTP giving it a logical name in here, how it comes to the conclusion of giving it a, a logical name. We did talk about that. And the next thing we talked about is the properties. Uh, the object uh, will have properties, and there are something called mandatory properties, and then there are some optional properties like the ordinal identifier. All right? Okay, now, um, let's talk a little bit about the execution of the playback. Um, while, while it is playing back, right, while it is playing back, it is going to read one line at a time, all right? So QTP reads one line in the script. The script contains only the logical name for the specific object, right? So these are the logical names. So now the question is, uh, what happens if, 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 this gets, if this gets changed? But where would you change that? You could change that in the object repository. So if I go in here, and uh, this, is my, this is my object, right? This is that, that object, if you, if you see. This is that object uh, right now you're seeing, right? And uh, that's, the, that's the name of the object over here. That's the name of the object. What if, if I go ahead and then change this, the name of this uh, browser? Let me just call it uh, eBay, eBay uh, browser. And um, let's see if it changes that. Okay, it did change it here, right? And then take a look into the script. It changed everywhere. It did change there. It did change there. It changed here, changed there, right? So what is it telling you? Um, logical names uh, are logical names. You could just go ahead and then change them if you want to, right? And uh, and call, uh, or rather, give them more descriptive or user-friendly names. So in this case, for the page, uh, the name of the page here was uh, eBay Electronics, right? If I need to change that, I could, I could do that. Now, uh, for me to change the name, I could come in here, uh, see that little square bracket which gets once you double click on that it, it gets you. So let me call this as uh, page one, right? Page uh, one. And when I do that, it it did replace in here all the way. It said page one. eBay browser page one page one. It did not replace this because this was the second page we went in there, right? So if you wanna uh, change that, you come in here, right? And you go in there and then you say let me change this to the second page, right? So I'm gonna come in here. And I will say page two, uh, hit enter. So that becomes my page two, right? It gets changed over here and it gets changed uh, over here. That's how you change the logical names in the object uh, uh, repository and that it gets reflected into your script. Well, um, so that's uh, a short video. We talked about uh, object repositories. We talked about uh, test objects. We talked about uh, um, the properties, the mandatory properties and the optional properties. We talked about uh, changing the logical name to any user-friendly name that you want to give. Uh, uh, and uh, that's about it on this video. So thank you so much for um, you know taking a look into this object repository of QTP. And we're going to come back with a lot of other videos uh, in our future sessions. Um, take care.